Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to A Late Show. I am your host, Stephen Colbert. I, uh, the emotions are running high, I gotta say. It's night three of the Democratic National Convention, and once again, we are live all this week. We're bringing you every Zoom-tastic moment in a four-night mega-event we're calling... Democrats assemble. Are you fired up? And so we fight. It is what it is. I am Kasich. Every night of the DNC has had a theme. Monday was We the People, Tuesday was Leadership Matters, and tonight was a more perfect union. Or as Trump calls it, fourth time's the charm. Of course, this week marks 100 years since women gained the right to vote, and tonight there was a powerhouse lineup of speakers, including Nancy Pelosi, Elizabeth Warren, Hillary Clinton, and Kamala Harris. It is going to be tough for the Republicans to match that. All they got are Ivanka, Betsy DeVos, and a disturbing sculpture Eric Trump calls Lady Dad. She loves him. The evening kicked off with Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers, who had a very Biden-esque call to action. Holy mackerel, folks. Let's get to work. What a pleasant battle cry. Gee golly gosh, everybody. Slap me with a salmon and stick a trouser in my trouts. Time to get this fish on the road. Opening remarks were delivered by vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris, who was so raring to go, she spoke from the truck they ship new vice presidents in. Each of us needs a plan, a voting plan. Yes, for example, I plan on voting then cracking open a fifth of Mount Gay and blacking out till the votes are all counted. Of course, this was just a preview for her speech at the end of the night. I'll see you a little later tonight, and until then... I'll be unloading these crates. Joe's in one of them. Marco! Marco! The night was hosted by actress Carrie Washington, dressed in a striking pinstripe suit that you usually only wear if you're planning on killing the Batman. Tonight, we're going to talk about where we are and where we're going. Uh, Carrie, we're in a pandemic. The answer to both of those is the couch. Then we heard from Michelle Lujan Grisham, who is the governor of... Nuevo Mexico. Wait a second, there's another Mexico. Can we get them to pay for the wall? I've only got a week. The evening then turned to the overwhelming evidence of global warming. Maybe you've read some of the millions of pages of scientific evidence on climate change. Oh, I mean, it's definitely on my list, I, but I'm still making my way through the new uh, Hunger Games, uh, but it's, it's definitely on the list. We even got this soundbite from Joe Biden himself. When I think about climate change, the word I think of is jobs. Really? Because the word I think of is, ah! Ah! Then... We saw a very cool video about America as a country of immigrants. Life in America was not always easy. There was discrimination and hardship and poverty. And that's just the past four years. Hillary Clinton was up next. She took the opportunity to reflect on everything that has happened since she won the popular vote. For four years, people have told me, I didn't realize how dangerous he was. I wish I could do it all over. Or worse, I should have voted. And for four years, I've done everything in my power to not to punch those people in the face. Hillary let America know that she feels your pain. There's a lot of heartbreak in America now. And the truth is, many things were broken before the pandemic. For instance, the broken horse femur I sent in the mail to James Comey. Still willing to hear if you got my message, Jim. The winner of the 2016 popular vote said she had hoped Trump would do well. The morning after the last election, I said, we owe Donald Trump an open mind and the chance to lead. 
Okay, that's nice. But remember, she also said, we have to Pokemon go to the polls. So maybe I don't trust everything she says. Then Clinton put our collective yearning into words. I wish Donald Trump knew how to be a president because America needs a president right now. Can any of you think of one? I can. Here's a hint. She's got two thumbs and bites them to keep from constantly screaming. Then we heard from Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi, who gave a powerful speech. But the thing that everybody's really talking about tonight is this moment from Pelosi's introductory video. If you want to go into the arena, you have to be prepared to take a punch. But you also have to be prepared to throw a punch for the children. <laughs> throw a punch for the, the children. children. Woo! That's right! I was on the reel. I got more airtime than AOC. I'm part of American history because I spoke to Nancy Pelosi and because I used to be allowed to sit within three feet of senior citizens. Well, wow, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I did not uh, see this coming. I did not expect it. I get it, but I did not see this coming. It's such an honor. Yes, I accept your nomination. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm being told I'm misreading the moment. My apologies. Let's, uh, where were we? Then, Kerry Washington was back to set the scene. In order to get to that more perfect union, we have to acknowledge where we are. Again, the couch. I don't know how many times I need to tell you that. Friend of the show, Elizabeth Warren, spoke about childcare. I'm here at the Early Childhood Education Center in Springfield, Massachusetts, which has been closed for months. Breaking in wasn't easy, but I had a plan and a crowbar. Warren left a secret message in her set. The blocks behind her said BLM. That's really nice. Somewhere, a very confused worker at the Bureau of Land Management is feeling pretty good right now. Then suddenly, he appeared. Former President Barack Obama. Good evening, everybody. Oh my God! He's really there. It's everything I miss. Obama, the Constitution, a president, haircuts. He looks so fresh. The constitutional scholar Obama came straight out. Embedded in this document was a North Star. And a treasure map written on the back in secret code. It was up to Nicolas Cage to find it. Obama said he really thought back in 2016 things might go better. I did hope for the sake of our country, that Donald Trump might show some interest in taking the job seriously. Look, sir, I know you're the guy who coined the hope slogan, but even your poster doesn't buy that. <laughs> Obama reiterated the fundamental basics of the job. We should expect that regardless of ego, ambition, or political beliefs, the president will preserve, protect, and defend the freedoms and ideals that so many Americans marched for, went to jail for. And to all those who were jailed fighting for the things I hold dear, Ghislaine Maxwell, I wish you well. Now, remember no drama Obama? Well, now he's trash talk Barack. For close to four years now, he has shown no interest in putting in the work. No interest in finding common ground. Donald Trump hasn't grown into the job it's, because he can't. It's true. The man hasn't grown since he was a toddler. He's the only president who still needs a sippy cup. He obama on. No interest in treating the presidency as anything but one more reality show that he can use to get the attention he craves. Well, I'm not here to make friends. And I have to tell you, Barack, that sort of attitude is why I'm not picking you to go on a date with me in the White House fantasy suite. You're here for the wrong reasons. Obama then turned to his vice president. So let me tell you about my friend, Joe Biden. I told you we were best friends. Brock and I are closer than two scoops in a cone, except I'm melting a lot faster. Come on, Jack, hit me with some sprinkles. Just some insulation. Obama peeled back the curtain on Trump's moral bankruptcy. Here's the point. 
This president and those in power, those who benefit from keeping things the way they are, they are counting on your cynicism. Joke's on you, Barack. I can't count. One person, man, woman, five. And Obama had a strong warning for voters. Do not let them take away your power. Do not let them take away your democracy. Do not let them take away your mailboxes. Maybe put some olive oil on them or some KY jelly, something slippery so they're too hard to pick up. Then Obama reminded us who has the power to fix our country. You can give our democracy new meaning. You can take it to a better place. So, New Zealand? Then, we sponged off our tears, and it was time for the main event, the acceptance speech for the vice presidential nomination by California Senator Kamala Harris, seen here really enjoying an off-camera puppet show. Harris gave a riveting speech in front of a long line of, I'm gonna guess, flags that Trump had groped. The VP nom started her speech with lessons she learned from her mother. I do so committed to the values she taught me, to the word that teaches me to walk by faith and not by sight. As long as you can walk down a ramp, I don't care how you do it. She also shared her vision for the future of this country. A vision of our nation as a beloved community where all are welcome, no matter what we look like, no matter where we come from or who we love. That's right, in America, when you're here, you're family. And that's why I'm also voting for Unlimited Breadsticks 2020. She also talked about the effect Trump's presidency has had on the American psyche. The constant chaos leaves us adrift. The incompetence makes us feel afraid. The callousness makes us feel alone. Okay, who gave her our campaign strategy? Kamala ended her speech by calling on all of us to think of future generations. Years from now, this moment will have passed, and our children and our grandchildren will look in our eyes, and they're going to ask us, where were you when the stakes were so high? Again, the couch. But honestly, after tonight, on the edge of it. We have a great show for you folks tonight. Senator Bernie Sanders is here. But when we come back, I show you living proof of why we really do need a new president. Stick around.